They take care of our machines, irons, phones, and toasters, MP3s and TV screens, even roller coasters. Without them, clocks stop ticking. Without them, lights go out. But if you need a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fixie, please don't let their secret out. Concrete. When will you be back from your fishing trip? Before dinner. So you won't have time to hang up the mirror again? Hm. If it's not one thing, it's another. Um, we were just planning to hang it right now. Uh, it'll only take us two minutes, and then we'll go fishing. Fuckers! Huh? Eh? What do you want, Nolik? When am I gonna go on a fishing trip with you? You know fixies don't go fishing. But you promised me that today. We will go and visit the aquarium. I was only planning on going there to clean it. So let's go fishing while we're at it. We'll pretend. Poppers, please. Okay, Nolik. But we'll just pretend to. Hooray! You're the best poppers ever! Nah, those won't work. Why won't they? Because our walls are concrete. They're much too hard for nails. See that? It's gonna need to be drilled. Hmm, I guess we'll need to use a special drill bit that's right for this wall. Concrete is a very strong building material made out of small stones, sand, cement, and water. When the concrete mixture dries, it becomes very hard, like a solid piece of rock. For building houses, bridges, and other large constructions, reinforced concrete is what people use. To reinforce the concrete, it is poured into a mold with steel bars. When you drill into a reinforced concrete wall, you have to be careful not to hit the metal bars. Poppers! Shh, humans. Mm-mm, not big enough. It won't hold up this mirror. But it's all we've got. <sighs> So we'll have to go and buy another. That stinks. Means there's no time to go fishing now. Actually, I think this will hold it for a little while. <clears throat> that looks great. So, ready? Poppers! Huh? Do we own fishing rods? We don't, but we'll figure it out. I really don't like how that mirror is hanging. That's what happens when people are in a rush to finish. We're fixies. We never do things like that. Papoose, we going fishing or not? Yes, we will. After we take care of this mirror. In ancient Rome, volcanoes helped make concrete. After they erupted, people would mix the volcanic ash with stones, lime, and sand. This concrete was used in many of the famous buildings constructed in that time. For instance, the Pantheon with its concrete dome. And this one is the famous Colosseum. It was also made with concrete. The Colosseum is almost 2,000 years old, but it's still standing strong. Later, when that land was conquered by other nations, people forgot about concrete and how to make it. Thank goodness that 200 years ago, they suddenly realized what a great material it is, and they reinvented concrete. It's true when they say, oh, everything new is well forgotten old. Pop, Bruce, carry on. Haste is the mother of imperfection. Hmm, it looks like I ran out of wire. Mm, lousy timing. I've got to get to the warehouse. Warehouse? That means we're not going fishing. Nolik, a promise is a promise, and that means we go. Eh, this should hold for a little while. <laughs> it's funny. We almost left without the fishing rods. Don't 
Don't panic. We did a good job of anchoring. Remember what I said? Haste is the... Yeah. Yeah, I'm not hearing things. Looks like a trip to the store after all. For screws? Yeah, and a brand new mirror. It looks like today's fishing trip's canceled. And ours is too, Nolik. At least the fish will be happy. The backpack. All right, homework's all done. Time to play? Tom Thomas, is that how you pack your backpack? Why not? What's wrong with it? I don't know how you think you're going to find anything at all in there. I will, too. Then go and find your ruler. Here you go. An eraser? Hang on, I'll get it. Where is it? Uh, you can't find it. What a shame. It's because this backpack is so lousy. The backpack is just fine. If you don't want to lose anything, you gotta pack it carefully. Or have a pack -a mat that can just hand everything to you. Oh, yeah! That's just what I need! A pack -a mat Only fixies have pack -a mats And I'm gonna have one. I'll make my own. <laughs> There's no way. Way? Because I'll help him do it. Sure, no, like... A backpack is a bag with shoulder straps attached. It was invented to make it easier to carry heavy loads for long distances and also for freeing up the hands. Backpacks help us maintain good posture and avoid slouching by putting the load's weight onto our back muscles and our spine. And you can fit so many things into a backpack, especially if the backpack has lots of separate compartments and everything is packed nice and neatly. The first backpacks were quite heavy and uncomfortable. They were made out of wood and leather. These kinds of backpacks were worn by ancient hunters. Later on, lighter backpacks appeared that were made out of canvas and became quite popular with travelers and soldiers. Today's backpacks are so light that even kids can carry them. <laughs> Testing of the world's first pack a mat design, especially for humans, begins! Ready? Ready to go! First thing out of your backpack, uh, I mean pack a mat, an eraser! Got it! Watch me! Ooh. A pen! Your blue one! Got it! Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> We're experiencing technical problems. We need a break. Testing of the world. I know, first. I know. Just start. Take out the eraser! Mm hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we'll say you did it. Take out the blue pen! Oh, wow! The ruler's next! <laughs> That's some pack a you got! <laughs> Class! Testing of the world's first pack a And designs. where's the uh, Nolik? Don't worry, he'll come later. Testing. All right, of... already. Let's get it started. Go ahead. The eraser. We've seen that twice already. The blue pen. Can you take out the ruler? Sure I can. Drum roll, please. Whoa. It's not possible. Let me see. Hmm. Huh. Now I get it. Why don't you take out your science book? Science book. <laughs> Cuckoo, did you get the textbook? There's no way! It's huge! Yeah, some inventors you are. <laughs> Your invention calls for a little improvement, and I know what it is. What? Just make sure that when you put things into your backpack, you do it neatly. Do it neatly. Takes forever and it's boring. I'm gonna show you how to make it fun! <laughs> Whenever it's a school day, a backpack's all you need. A backpack's all you need. A backpack's all you need. Your pencils, books, and papers will fit inside indeed. We'll fit inside, we'll fit inside, we'll fit inside indeed. Without a backpack on your back, you won't get by. You won't succeed. But with a backpack on your back, you will go far. 
whenever you go hiking, a backpack's all you need. A backpack's all you need. A backpack's all you need. Whatever you've collected will fit inside indeed. We'll fit inside, we'll fit inside, we'll fit inside indeed. Without a backpack on your back, you won't get by. You won't succeed, but with a backpack on your back, you will go far in The blood test. Fighting with flies? No. Dad signed me up for a class. I'm starting to learn martial arts. Are you going to fight like in the movies? What do you mean? I'm going to star in the movies. I'm going to play a superhero. Yeah! Ah! <laughs> He'd be a great windmill for sure. <laughs> Tom Thomas. Is first period free for you tomorrow? Yeah. Excellent. Then in the morning, I can take you in for a blood test. A blood test? Why do I need that? To make sure that you're healthy for your martial arts class. And remember, don't eat anything before the test. Don't worry, it's just a little needle. A little what? Mom! And what if I take some other kind of sport, like chess, for instance? Then I don't need a blood test? What's up? Are you scared? No. Mwah. I'm proud of you. Dad never told me I need a blood test. It looks like our superhero's a little scared. I think I'd be too. Blood sounds scary. Nothing scary about it. A human body has a huge number of little tubes called blood vessels with blood flowing through them. The blood carries oxygen and nutrients to the cells, takes away carbon dioxide from them, and protects them from harmful microbes. To be sure if you're healthy or not, it's often necessary to have a blood test. The most accurate results come from blood that is taken from a vein. The sample is analyzed to see if everything is all right. And if not, the doctor will prescribe a treatment. You see, it's totally safe. And there's nothing scary about it. Mm-hmm. Oh, blood should only be drawn on an empty stomach. What's that mean? It means no eating before the test. And what happens if I eat? Well, then they won't take any blood from you. Hmm, that's an idea. What's an idea? Um, I got no idea. Okay, good night. You're really not scared at all? Mm-mm. For some reason, I don't believe him. Huh? Huh? Hey, what's going on? You're not allowed to eat! Give it back! Hmm. Oh, my mom's coming! <laughs> oh. Tom Thomas, did you forget? You're not allowed to eat now. Do I have to have this test? Go on, go get yourself ready. to run away? Shh! I thought you wanted to be a superhero. You're being nothing but a coward. I'm not a coward. You are. I'm not. You're acting like one. Anyhow, I'm not going there. Don't even think about it. No, like, help! <laughs> ah! <sighs> Ready to go? All right, Tom Thomas, get up. It's time. Well, thanks a lot. And from now on, we're not friends. Making an accurate blood analysis is not a simple task. Originally, this work was done by people that would examine a drop of blood under a microscope. Today, in modern laboratories, technicians analyze blood with the help of smart analyzing machines. These machines can do the job much faster, and they don't make mistakes like people can. After you give some blood to be analyzed, the test tube is sent on a real journey to reach the laboratory for analysis. In the laboratory, it moves from one analyzer to another, each one of them examining a different part of your blood. Then, all of the data is put together, and that's it. The blood test is done. You can get an email when the report is ready, 
and check the results online so you don't even have to go out to pick it up. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool, huh? Thanks to you, we just lost our friend. It's because he was being a coward. And if it's my fault at all, it's only a little bit. Fixies! Are you here? We're here. Look what I've got! A certificate for bravery! You had the blood test! And you weren't scared? Uh-uh! Look! Way to go! So, are we friends again? Of course we are! All right! Then can you teach me a few of those moves? Yeah, sure! Wow! Yeah! The telescope. <gasps> Ooh, Buggy, <laughs> that was scary. Is Nolik with you? He said he was going to help us out. <sighs> Beautiful. Whoa, just look at all those stars. It's just like magic, this telescope. Splendid. The simplest telescope is a tube with two lenses. They gather and refract light. We look through a telescope at a faraway moon and see craters, mountains, and crevices on its surface as if they are very close. A telescope helps us examine stars and comets, distinguish the colors and shapes of planets, and find their moons. But it's only possible to look at the sun through a telescope if it has a special filter to protect your eyes from getting damaged. But what's really cool is that it spins! <laughs> no, really! Well, should we get going? Aren't we waiting for Nolik? He'll catch up. I'm gonna leave him a note. Nolik, we're in the computer. could finally see how our solar system is organized. The closest planet to our sun is a small planet called Mercury. Then comes the planet Venus, then our Earth, then Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, the furthest planet. Is it possible that life only exists on Earth? So far, not even living bacteria has been found on any of the other planets, let alone human life. But we'd like to believe that deep in space, someone is looking through a telescope and just like us, dreaming of finding their outer space brethren. That's where it was. Come on out, Fixie Eater. We're gonna need to use live bait. Where are you gonna get it from? It's me? Nolik, he knows you already. Don't be afraid. We won't let him hurt you. There's no way. Fixie Eater, come out right now. Ah! I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid of you. 
Barely. Ah! Help me! Ah! Catching fire! Ugh! I gotcha! It's Buggy! That's who you just caught! Then where's the Fixie Eater? Did you see the monster? Look at those jaws! Just like the monster! Nolik, show us where you saw the Fixie Eater. Up there! I saw him through the telescope! Buggy, could you please go up to that corner over there? Uh-huh. And now yawn. <laughs> Take a look. Ah! The Fixie Eater! Poor Buggy! What do you think? The jewel. Tom Thomas, it's time to eat. Where did it go? Chusaka. Did you see this tiny little... I can't believe now I'm asking a dog. Tom Thomas, are you looking for us? Hey, Fixies, maybe you can help me. One of these stones is missing. And so? And so, this pin is very valuable. And so's the stone. If I don't find the stone soon, it's going to be the end. Honey, your lunch is getting cold. There's no reason to panic. Your precious stone will be found. Wait a sec. Can stones really be precious? Of course they can. Gemstones are the most rare and beautiful of all stones. But it's not easy to find them. Diamonds, emeralds, rubies, sapphires. People find them underground and inside of mountains. Brave divers go to the bottom of the sea to find pearls. People have performed heroic acts and committed daring crimes to get these precious jewels. The magical shine of gems can both enchant and ruin. Remember, only gems acquired honestly bring happiness. I can't find it anywhere. Maybe Chusaka took it. She saw that it was valuable and... Um, you're right. Chusaka? Give us back the gem, all right? Give it back, we said. Why are you making Chusaka angry? Because she has to give the stone back. What stone, Simka? One that calls a ton. Dogs are supposed to keep treasure safe. But this one eats them. Maybe you didn't look carefully. For example, did you check inside that, that flower, flower pot? pot. <laughs> <laughs> this digging's just a waste. How could it end up in here? Because I know this is where we left it. Oh, is that so? All right, spit it out. <gasps> look at this. A diamond. This will look absolutely perfect on my back -a mat But I was the one that found it. It would look perfect on mine, too. Let's bring our pack -a mats and try it on them. We'll put it here for safekeeping. Well, who could have taken it? <laughs> we still need to check inside of Chusaka. <laughs> you gotta be joking. She'll eat you up. <gasps> Where are you going, huh? Inside Chusaka to get the stone out. No, like, don't, please. Ooh. I'm ready to do anything my friend needs me to. Huh? By any chance, are you looking for this? Huh? <gasps> Where in the world did you find it? I found a buried diamond. It looks like a diamond, but to be sure, we'll have to conduct a test. A raw diamond looks like an ordinary stone. But after cutting and polishing each of its facets, that special stone transforms into a rare and very expensive jewel that can adorn a necklace, a crown, or a museum's display case. The truth is, only a small part of all found diamonds is used for jewelry. It's because a diamond is also the hardest rock on the planet. That makes it perfect for cutting glass. Diamonds are used in making strong drill bits and cutting blades. Many important medical instruments could not be made without them. 
With the help of diamonds, it's even possible to drill through a mountain when building a tunnel. That's just how valuable diamonds are. They can cut a pipe and go well with a dress. Isn't it pretty? Only it's not a... Tom Thomas! We found a star! Oh, oh. And now it's gone. Fixies, I was sure my precious present was gone. And who is the present for? Katya, I think she'll like it. Now, I've got to tell you, Tom Thomas, that's not a precious stone. You got nothing but glass there. I know. But it doesn't matter. What? I was risking my life for the sake of a piece of glass? First, it was for the sake of your friend. And second, the cost of the gift doesn't matter. It's only the thought that counts. The star. And so, this is our solar system. And it consists of... Friends, you're not going to believe it. I found... I discovered an unknown star. That is superb, Kali. Yeah. And today, journalists will visit the laboratory for an interview. Who's going to be interviewed? If you weren't late, you'd know that. I had to do my hair. They're here. Everyone hide. There are lots of galaxies in the universe with billions of hot glowing spheres that everybody knows as stars. Stars are each born out of huge clouds of gas and dust that are called nebulas. We see stars in the sky as tiny dots, but that's only because they are very, very far away. The closest star to our planet is the sun. Even though the sun isn't the hugest star, it still gives us the heat and light we need to live. Professor Eugenius is a celebrity now, on a global scale. Yeah. Hey, did you see? Verda also got on the cover. No joke. Where? <gasps> And I think we look pretty good together. So, who wants my autograph? <laughs> we'll have to wait till after school. Uh -uh. It's time to go. Hey, aren't you going? Not right now. My colleague and I have more important business. What colleague? The professor. Both of us have become celebrities. Verda, you got on that cover totally by accident. Uh -uh -uh. Somebody's jealous. <laughs> Well, we've got our new star. <laughs> now, what should I name it? A colleague? Huh? Why don't you name the new star Verda? After all, it does sound pretty. Verda, Verda. Hmm. Like a vertex whirling around. <laughs> That's a great idea. It's a shame you didn't get my autograph. Because that new star now has my name, Verda. <laughs> And now an elaborate celebration needs to be thrown in my honor. I mean, mine and the professor's, of course. What celebration are you talking about? With a red carpet and flowers? Why are you just standing there? Make it happen! The poor girl thinks she's a star. Absolutely. So what can we do about it? With lunatics, it's better not to argue. That's what I read. Then let's play your silly game. Your Majesty. Your red carpet awaits. Then unroll it. And the flowers? Am I supposed to do everything myself? Of course not. Here, Your Highness, your crown. All right, now we're talking. I am a star. She's totally lost it. Mm-hmm. He's coming. Finally, finally, my dream is reality. Ah, oh, my little fixie friends, it's you here. I'm so honored you gathered here to congratulate me today. <laughs> us? Yes, us, them, we. We all should celebrate. No, I mean you and I. <laughs> now show us what you're carrying. Uh, of course, the certificate. It says, this star discovered by Professor Eugenius 
has been registered with the name VE-03732. What? Oh. <laughs> That's what we should start calling our big star from now on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's so funny? A clear night is perfect for searching in the sky for constellations. The easiest one to find is the Great Bear or the Big Dipper, which looks like a soup ladle. If you draw a line through the two outside stars of the Big Dipper, you'll find the bright North Star, which is part of a constellation called the Little Bear or the Little Dipper. A bit further is the W-shaped Cassiopeia. And these three stars that are next to each other are well known as the Belt of Orion. If you draw a line through them, you'll find a star named Sirius. It's part of the Greater Dog constellation, and it's the brightest star in the night sky. And on the other side of it, there is the star Aldebaran of the constellation Taurus. And these are but a few of the most visible stars. It's not even possible to imagine how many stars there really are in the universe. Tula? I'm here. Fire? Here. VE-73032? Is that someone new? Yeah, we've got a new student. She's a star. A new giant star. <laughs> <laughs> you bet. But if you meet a pixie, please don't let their secret out. 